everyone, welcome back to the Kisana Health channel, the best health information channel for people with pre-diabetes or type 2 diabetes. If you have any of these conditions, you've probably heard of the term insulin resistance. So in today's video, I want to explain what that really is and help you understand what insulin resistance is actually doing inside your own body. Because when we come at things from a place of understanding and a place of knowledge, we are better equipped at making positive changes that will help us live a better and healthier life. First, let me start by saying that you are not alone. Unfortunately, insulin resistance is very common. It's estimated that one in two people in North America has insulin resistance. And the problem is the majority of those people don't even know they have it. And then a good chunk of them go on to develop type 2 diabetes or a number of other health conditions, which is why it's crucial to understand what it is and either prevent it or reduce it. So let's dive in. What is insulin resistance? To understand insulin resistance, we have to understand what insulin is in the first place. Insulin is a hormone. It's a hormone that's secreted by your pancreas, more specifically the beta cells of your pancreas. Its main purpose is to regulate your blood sugar. So when you eat, your stomach digests the food and turns it into sugar or glucose. That sugar is essential to help our body function because it's our main source of energy. It's the fuel that's used by all the cells in our body to function. So you eat, your body turns the food into sugar and then sends it into the blood to deliver energy where it's needed. So your blood sugar levels increase and that's what sends a signal to your pancreas to start releasing insulin. Now what insulin does is it takes this excess glucose and allows it to enter your cells so it can either be used immediately or stored for future use. Think of insulin as the key that opens the door of your cells to let sugar in. It's thanks to insulin that your blood sugar levels decrease as it allows sugar to enter your muscle cells, your liver, or your fat cells. Now insulin resistance is when your body stops responding to insulin. Remember we said that insulin was the key that opened the door of your cells? So insulin resistance happens when the cells decide to change the lock on their door so insulin can no longer open the door and let that sugar in. And in that case, sugar will continue to accumulate in your blood. The thing is, it doesn't just stop there. Once you start to develop insulin resistance, your blood sugar levels start to rise, right? Now this sends a signal to your pancreas to keep producing even more insulin. So now you find yourself with high levels of sugar and high levels of insulin in your blood. And this combination continues to damage the lock on the door of your cells, which become even more resistant to insulin. Think of it this way. If I have a key to my home, but the lock on my door is starting to get damaged, my key won't always be able to unlock the door. What I can do is I can go make plenty of copies of my key and I can try to open with all these new key copies that I've made. That's one way that I can increase my odds of getting the door open. And it will work from time to time. But the problem is every time I try to open the door and it doesn't work, I damage the lock even more. And that's essentially what insulin resistance is. The ideal solution, of course, is to increase insulin sensitivity or repair the lock on the door which for the body isn't as straightforward as hiring a locksmith. But more on that in a bit. By the way, in case that wasn't clear, I'll just mention quickly that insulin resistance and insulin sensitivity are two sides of the same coin. Meaning that if you have high insulin resistance, you have low insulin sensitivity and vice versa. What's the cause of insulin resistance? Why did our cells decide to change the lock on their door and become insulin resistant? There isn't one single cause of insulin resistance. It's usually a combination of different factors. So let's talk about these factors that can contribute to insulin resistance so that later we can better understand how to reverse that. I'm gonna start with the more obvious reasons. So don't roll your eyes at me. Number one, high sugar intake is linked to insulin resistance. Like I said earlier, the more sugar we have in our blood, the more insulin is produced and the more risk we have at damaging those locks. Number two, overeating and increased body fat are also linked to insulin resistance. But, and this is important, it doesn't only happen to people that are overweight. What's mostly linked to insulin resistance is belly fat or visceral fat, which is the excess fat that accumulates around our vital organs. And that's not always visible to the naked eye. Visceral fat is problematic because it's known to release free fatty acids and inflammatory hormones in our bloodstream. And those are believed to increase insulin resistance. Number three, inactivity, not moving our body or not being physically active is also linked to insulin resistance. Now we're gonna talk about the contributing factors that are a bit less obvious. Number four, our gut microbiome. 
Studies show that when the bacteria in our gut is disrupted, it can cause inflammation, which is linked to insulin resistance and a whole bunch of other metabolic issues. Number five, there are many genetic and socioeconomic factors that can contribute to insulin resistance. For example, we know that genetically, Black, Hispanic, and Asian people are at higher risk of insulin resistance. And as for social factors, things like what the environment was like when our mother was pregnant play a big role as well, or what we were exposed to as kids. So when we're exposed to high amounts of sugar and highly processed foods from a very young age, it makes our beta cells in our pancreas hypertrophy, which means they get bigger in size. And as they get bigger, they produce more insulin. And as we know by now, more insulin around creates more insulin resistance. So you can see how there's many factors that come into play, and many of these factors are ones that we cannot control. We don't control our genetics, and we can't always control our environment either, at least not the environment we grow up in. This is important to recognize because you can't blame yourself for having insulin resistance. And anyway, it's never just one thing that causes it. It's usually a combination of different factors that can create it. What are the signs and symptoms of insulin resistance? Not everyone has symptoms of insulin resistance, especially in the beginning, which is probably why many people don't even know they have it. And sometimes the symptoms are thought to be caused by other health issues because they aren't specific to just insulin resistance. But with that in mind, here are a few examples of symptoms that may appear if you have insulin resistance. Fatigue, because there's no sugar in the cells, they can't enter because of insulin resistance. So your muscle cells don't have adequate fuel to function, so you feel more tired than usual. Tingling sensations, because high blood sugar damages the nerves in your hands and your feet. Frequent urination, because your kidneys are trying to help you by eliminating some of that excess sugar. And by doing that, you also end up eliminating lots of water, which leads to the next symptom, thirst. You can also have hunger after eating. Since sugar isn't entering in your cells, your body isn't registering that there's fuel, so it continues to send hunger signals to your brain. And finally, infections and slow healing. That's because high blood sugar can impair the function of your white blood cells, which are the ones that defend your body against harmful intruders that can cause infections. So you might get sick more often, or if you have a wound, it might take a much longer time to heal. Having a few of the signs and symptoms I just described is not enough to diagnose it. So please make sure to check with your doctor so he or she can run the appropriate tests. There is a test that can be done to check if your fasting insulin levels are high, but to be honest, that rarely gets checked. Most of the times what doctors do is they prescribe lab tests to check your fasting blood sugar levels and your A1C. I have a video about the A1C that I'll link up here, so feel free to check that out if you want more information on what that is. Other markers that are linked to insulin resistance that your doctor can check also are your cholesterol levels, your triglyceride levels, your blood pressure, and your hip to waist ratio because that's a good indicator of belly fat. What other health issues are related to insulin resistance? Type 2 diabetes, of course, you knew that already. To put this in perspective, according to the ADA, the American Diabetes Association, about 50% of people go on to develop type 2 diabetes. Metabolic syndrome, also called insulin resistance syndrome. Metabolic syndrome refers to a combination of high blood pressure, belly fat, high blood sugar, high triglycerides, and low HDL. All of this is also closely related to heart disease. Then we have PCOS, or polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is a health issue that affects women mostly that's also very closely linked to insulin resistance. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, Alzheimer's disease, and sadly, cancer. It's important to remember that insulin resistance alone doesn't cause any of these conditions. It's usually a combination of different risk factors that can lead to them. So the next logical question you might have at this point is, how can I eliminate this risk factor? What can I do to reduce insulin resistance? While we can't change certain factors like genetics, we can, however, make simple lifestyle changes that can dramatically improve this issue. Number one, exercise. Probably the best way to improve insulin sensitivity. Number two, losing belly fat. Quick disclaimer, please note that you can't spot reduced fat in the areas that you wish. But if you're overweight and you begin to lose weight in a healthy manner via exercise and healthy eating habits, you will also gradually lose the harmful kind of fat, so the belly fat, the fat around your main organs. Number three, smoking cessation. We know that smoking increases insulin resistance, so stopping can only help. Number four, reducing sugar intake, which doesn't mean to completely eliminate all carb foods. Focus on reducing added sugars. 
One of my favorite advice and one of the easiest ways to do that is to look at your beverages. What do you drink? There's so many juices, teas, coffees, kombucha, cocktails that have added sugar. So substituting those with non-sweetened alternatives is a great way to start. Number five, having a balanced diet. Focus on whole, unprocessed foods. Eat plenty of vegetables and don't forget to get enough protein and healthy fats. Speaking of healthy fats, omega-3s, which are found in certain types of fatty fish, are a great way to reduce insulin resistance. Number six, sleep. Better sleep helps you to better regulate your appetite and make better food choices. And it also improves your concentration and your immune system. And it will help you better manage your stress, which is another super important aspect of reducing insulin resistance. Number seven, reducing stress or learning to better manage it. Because high stress levels lead to high levels of cortisol, which lead to higher blood sugar levels, which worsen insulin resistance. Some ways to lower our stress levels include meditation or breathing exercises, but also every other thing that I just mentioned, regular exercise, healthy foods, better sleep, those are all things that can help us reduce and manage our stress. Insulin resistance may be one of the key drivers of many of the worst chronic health conditions that we face as humans. However, reducing it or preventing it can be one of the most powerful ways of living a better, longer, and healthier life. And I find it's so empowering that we can do that with simple lifestyle measures. That's the reason I do everything that I do. These videos, this channel, the free course that I'm going to link down below. So I truly hope that you find this video helpful. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the little bell icon. And let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if there's any topics that you'd like me to elaborate on in a future video. Thanks so much for watching. Stay healthy, stay safe. I will see you in the next video. Insulin resistance, insulin resistance, insulin, insulin resistance.